Hi, I'm Andrew and welcome back to Young Paleo. Today we're going to be making a really fast and simple um, paleo fish cake recipe and we're going to be serving that with a garlic aioli as well as a small side of greens. So anyway, to get started, what I have done is uh, I have uh, just peeled three um, which are reasonably large um, kumara, which are sweet potatoes. So I've just peeled the skins off those and I've got them sitting waiting. I have uh, six courgettes. This is going to feed sort of three to four people, sort of reasonable sized um, amount of food here. So I've got six courgettes, three sweet potatoes, uh, three eggs. Uh, I've got about a pound of red cod here, but you can really use any kind of flaky white fish. Um, or alternately, you could use um, tinned tuna or something like that if you have it as well. So um, we're sort of just, it's a paleo adaptation of a, a tuna fish cake recipe. Anyway, so what we're going to do in addition to it is we're going to make a garlic aioli. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, basically what it is, is it's using the mayonnaise recipe that you may find in some of our other videos. Um, which we use a cup of oil, a um, bit of salt and a bit of pepper, sorry, a bit of lime juice and an egg, and we do it with the blender. Um, the only difference between the mayonnaise and the aioli is that we'll add some crushed garlic into it as well, so to just give it that little bit of a garlicky zing. Anyway, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to grate the sweet potato and the courgettes. Um, and, and get them into a colander here. So what I'm going to start by doing is just getting a large glass bowl and I'm making a bit of noise there. I'm just going to bring this across to the middle and I'm just going to start to grate some of that into here. Now the idea with using the colander is that once we've got these grated into this bowl we're going to line that colander with paper towels and we're going to sort of just try and get some of the extra moisture out of the uh, sweet potato and the courgette. Uh, because if it's too wet and mushy, they don't really fry all that well. So that's the whole idea behind why I've got paper towels and a colander uh, sitting out and waiting. So as you can see this grates up to quite a reasonable amount. Just going to mix it up a little bit because we're mixing obviously the courgettes and the uh, sweet potato together. So this is going to be quite a big recipe obviously with this amount of material going into it. So obviously if you wanted to make it for sort of one or two people you just adjust these quantities down a little bit. So that's one sweet potato and two kumara in there. So what we're going to do now is just grab a paper towel, layer that into the bottom and just grab a handful of that and we're just going to pop it in like so. And we'll grab another paper towel. So you just keep using these as they get um, increasingly damp and we just squish it through. So that way we're pushing the water out and it's just absorbing into the paper towel. So you're going to want to use maybe a few paper towels for this um, just to help get the moisture out. And as you mush it down then you sort of want to fluff it back up to mix it so we're getting some of the 
damper stuff out of the middle of your lot. So the idea, you can sort of just carry on as long as you need to with this. But the idea is to sort of pat it down and get that mixture as dry as you can. So I'll roll that out from there. You can see that paper towel is quite wet. So I'll just bring that back here. And probably the wettest thing you'll find is the core sheet, and the reason that is is because the majority of core sheet is actually water. Much more so than the sweet potato. So I'm actually quite happy with that. So we're just going to do some more into the colander. So I'm not going to make the whole recipe on this segment because it'll take me too long to grate all of the sweet potatoes and all of the things, but you'll get the idea from what I'm doing here. You're going to make quite a substantial meal for your family. And the nice thing about these cakes is you keep them in the fridge as well. They're quite nice cold. It is a little bit hard on the old paper towels, but like I say, they're cheap, so it's really not a big deal. We want to get as much of that moisture out as we can. And that's the difference between a really uh, nice, crisp fish cake as opposed to one that's pretty mushy. paper towel and do that at the bottom of that bowl as well. So here we go. Anyway, throw all that back in the bowl. So this first lot we make is about a third of the quantity. So it's one potato, one egg, and two courgettes. But obviously, the purposes of making this for the family, you'll times that by three, according to the recipe we have there. So, from there, just going to grab an egg. Go into it like so, just to help mush that egg through. I'm going to use two eggs there, just because it'll help bind it together a little bit better. Otherwise you'll find the rosti can be a little bit, or fish cakes can be a little bit uh, difficult to bind. So I'm just going to sit that across there and we're going to bring some of the fish over. with this. So we're just going to slice this. Now I'm using red cod here, but you can use any kind of flaky white fish. So the aim of this is we're just chopping it so it's just into small pieces and that just works its way through the fish cakes as best we can. Right, so that looks about right. So we're going to add that straight into there. Gonna bring that back over. So we're just going to work that fish 
tray. Okay, so from there we're going to add some fresh ground pepper. I really like pepper, so I add quite a lot. Just going to sprinkle a few thyme leaves in there as well. And again, just sort of use your own judgment in terms of how much you put in there. Might be about a teaspoon per mixture of this. And I'm going to just do a small shake of chili flakes as well, just to liven it up. Uh, bear in mind the chili flakes are totally optional if you're not really into that. Um, but I just like it to have a little bit of a kick. So that looks about right to me. So, move that to the ear. So we're just going to warm that pan up and just put a little bit of oil in the bottom. And just wait for that to heat up. In the interim, sit that over here and I want to make the aioli. So I'm going to get a cup of oil. got three cloves of garlic here and I'm going to just crush those into it as well. Put a little bit of lime juice in here as well, and we're going to put two to three teaspoons. I'm using the cheats version today. I've just got some pre prepared lime juice here. One, two, three. But ideally, you'd want to use fresh limes. Right, we're going to come back to this pan because that's getting really hot. Actually, I'm just going to tip some of that oil out because I've got a wee bit much in there. So I'll come back to that aioli. And I'm just going to grab sort of a large black spoon. And we're sort of just going to work sort of a reasonable amount into it there. And that in. we're going to be doing probably two or three of these at a time. We stuck with three. Okay, so we're just gonna just flatten them out a wee bit. Bring that temperature down a wee bit. I don't want to burn them. Okay, so we'll come back to that aioli. So just put a little bit of black pepper in there. That'll do us. And okay, so we're going to bring that to the bottom and do 20 seconds and then bring it up.
It's a really garlicky aioli. It smells fantastic. Let's set that over there. Okay, so there we have it. I've just pulled those fish cakes out of the um, fry pan. So I've just served that with a small green salad, pop three in there, and I've just served them with a little dollop of garlic aioli on top of them. So hope you really enjoy that and look forward to seeing you back here next time for another delicious yum paleo recipe. See you then.